Hello, welcome to your third lecture on this course titled Raising Money for Your Small Businesses When Banks Refuses to, refuse to Give You Loans and You Can't Access Bank Facilities. I believe that you've enjoyed the first two videos and your work so far with your, with your mentor. And um, I believe like in the first video, you were shown how you can raise money via business plan competitions. You were, past, you were taught how to deliver your three-minute speech. You're also guided on how you can focus your business idea so that once anybody sees it or you present in a business plan competition, people can see it as a viable business. And also in the second video, you were shown a practical demonstration by Ibom Su, who won the one of the, who were one of the winners of the You Win project, and they were sponsored by the federal government. She told us her experiences and the things she did that enabled her to win the business plan competition and got her funding from the You Win project. Now, in this third video, we are going to be showing you how you can raise money via proposal writing. Now, this is an area, a source of regenerating fund that I enjoy so much because I've seen it. I've used this a lot of time, and also two of our students have used this to raise more than five million. The first student who I had the practical experience of sharing this idea with was somebody who had his business had just collapsed, but who had a wonderful business idea. I guided him on what to do, and he was able to get an investment of three million. And that be three million today. That was seven years ago. Today he has turned that three million to more than twenty million um, naira. The next person who is the MD of Jamia Leatherworks, you can search Jamia Leatherworks on, on Facebook, is somebody who was able to start from little to no, from a very low background to build a massive leatherworks industry, factory, company. And I helped him, first of all, to get um, funding via Faith Foundation. He won. Faith Foundation, 200,000 naira via Faith Foundation business plan competition. But most importantly too, he was able to raise 2.5 million from the legendary investor, Apostle Alele Hafford. Now for those of us who know Apostle Alele Hafford, you know that he's, he has been the chairman of a lot of quoted companies in the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So for him to get a proposal that he found viable and invested 2.5 million naira, is for you to that will let you know that proposal rising is a very effective way of raising funds for your small business. So I want to be, I want to walk you through the processes of writing a viable proposal that can help you to access the funding you need to grow your business. The beauty of most of these business of proposal rising is that most of the investment you get via proposal rising, most of them will come with zero interest rate. Or most time for those who invest, most of them will want to invest and share profit with you. Meaning that is the money is the profit that they, their money generates that they want to share with you, and not giving you money for you to pay them an interest. So let's start. The first stage of raising money via proposal writing is to be very clear about your business idea or business concept. Meaning that you must be able within. In less than 100 words, to state clearly what your business is all about. Let's say for um, Council or University, we want to write a proposal. So, in less than 100 words, this is what our Council University is all about. Council University is an online university platform that offers tailor made courses to businessmen, courses that will guide them to help, help them to grow their business profit and also help them to reduce their running costs. We run offer courses in areas such as business development, confidence building, and generating income. Our courses cost an average of 30,000 per student, and we currently have about 100 students taking our courses. We hope to expand our student base to about 1,000 students, and that is why we need support from an investor to help us expand. Now, you can see that in less than 100 words, I've been able to state clearly what Council of University does. Number one is an online university platform. Number two, we offer courses to businessmen, which means this is our ID um, customers. Secondly, we charge a fee for our services, which is at least 30,000, and we already have a student base of 100 students. Now, somebody who sees that would know that, okay, this is a business that people are, that already has customers. Because for 100 people to be paying 30,000 per month, it means that this 
the people who are taking the course are seeing it as viable pro- project. So for you to, you must be able to write in hundred words what your business is all about. You know, one of the things you were taught in the last video was how to deliver a pitch. Now, what you now need to do is to be able to write that pitch down in less than hundred words what your business is all about. The next thing you also need to do is um, you need to state clearly how your business makes money. For us, at Cancelon University, we offer courses where we charge students a fee of 30000 for a 30 year, 30 days period. And we, we currently have about 30 students. And before they choose any student starts, he pays a fee of 5000 Naira for the registration. And then after one week, pays a fee of the remaining balance of 25000 now with this, any investor who we are writing to can see that yes, before any student comes to us, the student is already committed by 5,000. And after 25, um, 7 days, the student now pays, commits the remaining 30,000, 25,000. So anybody who is investing in us can actually see clearly how we make money. So the question is, can you state clearly in less than 100 words how your business makes money? You need to be stay, you need to stay clear so that anybody who sees it can see where if he invests in your business, if he gives you this money that you're asking for, that this money that he's putting in your business can actually help you to grow. Because for us now, let's say we, our target is to increase the student base from the current 100 to about 1,000. Meaning that if we are doing 3 million with, with 100 students, somebody who invests in us can see that if I invest in this company, we can actually move their revenue from 30,000 to 30, from 3 million to 30 million. So somebody who, is, who wants to invest, you can actually see a viable way where his, his investment can generate income. Because anybody who wants to invest wants to know how his money coming to your business can be made to multiply. That is how banks raise the money, make their own money. They give you money, and they, but before they give you, they study your business to see, can this business generate revenue? You know, what most people fail to understand when they're asking for bank loan is that they think that bank is interested in their collateral. Bank is not interested in your collateral. What they're interested in is in how the cash flow of your business, how your business is able to generate revenue and how profitable the business is. No matter how wonderful your collateral is, it will not guarantee them security of their income and most importantly, the interest that they are charging you on the loan. They are more interested in, in the interest and the collateral cannot guarantee interest payment is the, the business ability to generate revenue that will guarantee you, guarantee them the interest payment. That is why most people who come to them, when they can't see how the, 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 the loan that they will give to you will generate interest, they won't give you the money. That is why you need to be very clear on how your business is going to generate revenue. So like when I see the business, I say, okay, he's doing $2 million now. If I give, invest this amount you're asking me into the business, the business can move from $2 million to $10 million. So you need to be able to state this clearly in less than 100 words. Especially break it down in form of calculation so that anybody who sees it, not just reading letters, can see the break, financial breakdown. 100 students equals 100 students at the rate of 30,000 equals 33 million. Start-off fees of 5,000 times um, 100 students equals 5, 500,000. So somebody can see, okay, this times this, give this. So if 100 gives 3 million, then 1,000 where my extra investment into this will equal this. People need to see clearly in clear terms, figures, in clear figure terms, where the amount, if they invest in your business, what it will generate. The next step too you need to do when you want to raise money via proposal is to have an account and prepare your six months to one year historical account. Now what is historical account means that You've been running a business for about six months to one year. An investor wants to see in simple terms how profitable your business has been. Most importantly, they want to see your historical cash flow. What most people fail to understand the difference between profit and cash flow. A business might be profitable but fail, but a business that is constantly generating positive cash flow, even if it's not profitable, will keep going and going. Cash flow is the liquid capital that comes into your business and goes out. Let's say you, you are a businessman now and you sell um, granite. You might somebody might come and buy the granite. You might make produce granite at about um, to bottle it might cost you hundred naira, and you sell it for about five hundred naira, meaning that you are making a profit of four hundred naira. But then that so, that person might take 
about six months to pay you that 500 naira for you to be able to generate the actual profit. Mean that though your business is profitable, but it lacks the cash flow. Another person might make the, biz, the granite for 100 naira and sell it for 110 and he's paid cash. So for an investor, the investor can see the 10 naira that is coming in every month at, for every particular sales. So what you need to be, do is to prepare a historical statement of how your business has been generating cash over the past six months to one year. The next thing also you need to do is to provide, to pro prepare a projected cash flow, cash flow over six months to, to one year to three years and also a profit projection. This is why for you to be able to do a very good, especially when you're asking for an amount above five million, you need to get an accountant to work with you to prepare a very good financial statement, both historical and projected. These are key for you to get a very good amount that you want. Everybody wants to see how your business has been making money over the past six months to one year and how he hopes to continue to make money over the continued period. Now, one of the videos we asked you to watch in the past, in the first two videos, is to go to YouTube and watch the videos called Shark Tank. Shark Tank will show you how important your financials are. We also want to ask you again to go back and watch more of Shark Tank and also this other part called Dragon's Den. Go to YouTube and watch these two video series so that you can understand how important financial, historicals, and projections are to your business. Um, the other thing you also need to do is to master how to present the financial reports clearly. Meaning that your accountant will present you with some figures. You need to be able to state in clear terms, in less than one um, hundred words, what the financial that your accountant has generated means to the investor. So you must act, master the act of pre, pre, um, fe, understand financials. There's a book I think I'll suggest you get to read, which is called, um, let me look at my library. Just a moment. It's called Personal Finances for Dummies. You need to get this one, Personal Financing for Dummies. It'll tell you about how to understand finances. There's also another one that is called... There's also another one called Reading Financial Statement for Dummies. But uh, if you can't get any of this, we'll get a book that will teach you how to read financial statement and guide you on financials. It's important that you learn how to understand and present your financials in less than 100 words. The next thing too that you need to do is um, state clearly how much you need and how you intend to use the money. For instance, with the example I've been giving you, I said that what we need is an extra investment of about 5 million so that we can invest it in advertising and in building a more robust platform so that our platform, our website can accommodate more students at a particular time without crashing and we can also reach more people. That will raise our student base to about 1,000 and 1,000 students at 30,000 per student will give us a revenue of 30 million. You need to be able to state clearly what, how you tend to deploy the money that you are asking for. So if, let's say you need 5 million, I don't know how much you think you know, the first thing is to be very sure of how much you need. So that when you've understood how much you need, you now need to state clearly how you can deploy that money when it's given to you. Up to the very last cobble. Everybody wants to know this money that I'm giving to you, where do you want to deploy it and how do you want to deploy it? So you need to state clearly how you want to do it. So the next assignment that will be given you is how much do you need? How much do you think that your business needs? And in what area do you think that you deploy that money? How do you want to deploy that money? Is it in buying assets? Is it in, in advertisement? Is it in marketing? Is it employing recruiting more hand? So you need to state clearly what where you, you want to deploy that money when it's given to you. It's not when you say, okay, I need 10 million. It's okay. If I give you 10 million now, how will you deploy it? And most people, when this, most people feel that they need money. But like we experienced with most of you in the first video, you find out that in the first video, most of you that felt that you needed 5 million. We will not ask you, okay, if you get in the business plan completely, if they ask you, how do you want to deploy this 5 million? Most of you had challenges. It was now with time that you now say, okay, this is how we deploy it. Same thing applies with proposal writing. 
You need to understand clearly how you deploy the money that you are asking for. So, the next point is um, state clearly the duration you need the money for and how much you expect it to generate. State clearly, do, do, so, see, this is the part where a lot of people who are writing proposals make a mistake. Because you are acting for money, most times, most people feel that um, they can generate, get a return on the, the amount they are asking for in a very short time. One thing I always ask people is, you need to understand from your historical, if you invested one million, how long it took you to get, to make a sales or generate a revenue of, one, of that one million. Like for us, we do an average of 100 students. So if we are charging them about 100,000, about, about 30,000, we are looking at a projection monthly of about 3 million. So if we are asking somebody to give us an investment of 5 million, and we promise this person we, that we are going to pay this thing back in less than 30, in 30 days, you can see that that is just trying to deceive ourselves. Now, most times when people are asking for money, we tend to feel that the person giving us, when we, ask, when we extend the period, will be more reluctant to give us. I can tell you that with a lot of from experiences, most people who have not extended the duration of the loan, at least by, let's say you feel that you can generate this thing in 30 days, and you are not asking for 60 days, you find that you find yourself in some very big problem. So I always add advice. Add extra 60 days to the number of the duration you feel that you use, normally use to get that money back. Because anything can happen. Anything can happen that will derail your plan. And if you don't have, you not made that extra provision. Yes, you generate the money sooner, earlier than necessary. And you pay back with the whatever agreement you have. Fine. But one thing you don't want to do is delaying in paying back. That will really damage your reputation and make it difficult for you to source for funds in future. The next thing that you also need to do is state the sharing formula for the, for the profit. You need to understand that anybody who is going to give you money is not for the Christmas. They, want, they have an asset that they want to deploy. And anybody with an asset wants the asset to yield dividend for them. That's why you have what is called in financial term ROA, return on assets. Also called return on investment. If I'm giving you my asset, I want to know how much will that asset yield for me? And the minimum somebody will expect from you is what the person, the current interest rate of the nation will be. Meaning that instead of giving you this, let's say as I put this in my, in my bank account. Will this thing, what I'm giving to you, will he be able to yield more than the minimum that the savings my bank account can give to me? So it's important for you. But what I always advise is every human being, like I say, is naturally selfish. So if you present an offer that's very good to the person, give them a good share of the profit, the likely profit that comes. Everybody sees the big profit, the selfie motion will, motive will kick in and they want to invest in you. I always advise, don't give any investor less than 30%. Always say, I'll give you 40 to 50%. Because if they didn't invest in your money, the, the 50%, let's say somebody is investing 50, 5 million in your, in your business and that 5 million is likely to yield about 200,000 which you, 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 you split with the person. If he didn't invest with you, you might say, ah, if I share it 50-50 with this person, get, I'll do all the work. He does nothing. He just gives me money, and I give him 100000 Without his money, we won't get the, the part of 100000 So give a generous portion of that, whatever profit that is likely to come to your investor. Now, one thing I've also observed from most investors is that most of them, when they invest in your business, most of them say when you give them, just want to help. And they'll give you, say, no problem, just return the capital and keep the profit. But at the, mo at the point of investing, they want to let you know, they want to know how much you're offering to them. Which means it's for them to reject and not for you to say, ah, ah, they should help me or they should take at least the minimum amount. Give them as much returns as possible. Now, like I said before, Ask for a longer than expected payback time. Don't underestimate the things that can crop up that will delay your ability to pay back. If you feel it will take you one year to pay back, ask for one year and three months. If you feel that it will take you six months to pay back, ask for nine months. You'll be amazed. It has happened to me a lot, and I've seen it happen to a lot of people who have asked for loan, who have asked for facilities, feeling that within... Let me give you a practical example. I recently asked for... A 30 a 60 days facility which I expected to pay back in 30 days 
But when the recession hit, those who were supposed to pay, finance the, the, the venture for me to be able to pay back, gave me a payback plan of 90 days. Mean that even before the money started, come, I had started almost started to default. I had to run around to get money from other sources to be able to meet my obligation. The same applies to you. Always ask for more time than you think that you should, you should be able confidently to pay back. Now, the next thing also, the next way, the next thing you now need to do, after you've done all this, is the payback time, all these things, as far as I'm telling you, have to be in, have to be put in writing. These are the things you need to write down, including the payback time. Now, when you have done this thing and you have typed it down in a very neat format, everything shouldn't be more than three pages. Everything should not be more than three pages. You can make, yes, you can keep the financial that you prepared for you on a separate page, put them, attach them at the back of the page, but the main body of the proposal should be more than three pages. The longer the, 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 the explanation and the length of the proposal, the most, uh, more ambiguous is becoming and the more disinterest. Nobody, has a, nobody who wants to invest you has the time to read a very lengthy proposal. So make it short and simple. Now the next thing you, also, you now need to do is make a list of 10 people that you feel have what it takes to invest in your business. The other thing too you also need to do is go online. There are a, a, a body of called them um, Lagos State um, Board of Investors. No, they are angel investors, people who like to invest in businesses. And for those of you, there is a program that um, Professor Pato told me runs. He also has a way of linking people to investors. So what I would suggest you do is make 20 copies of this your proposal. Look for 10 of your acquaintances and 5 friends and 5 acquaintances. Don't go for people who are very close to you. Just people who you know, who you think have what it takes to finance your, this, your, your, um, your business or to invest in your business. Now give this proposal to 10 of them. Then now reach, go out online and look for these bodies of investors. If you search online, they're called angel investors. We have a lot of them online. Luckily, Professor Pat Totomi is developing a lot of them. I'll link up with them so that I can get the list of those in Lagos and other parts of the Federation. I'll share a course with you. The remaining 10 sent out to these people. From my experience, most of the people I've worked with by the fifth person, normally get an investment. But I always say, extend it to 10. 10 has never failed anybody who does, who has followed all these steps we've listed. Go through these steps and send out these proposals. And also reach out online. The online part is a bit novel because that one will also require you writing a complete business plan. But when somebody has seen everything that you've done and can see through it and see how it benefits him or her, I promise you that at least one person will want to give you the money that you're asking for. He has worked for me. He looks so simple, but it's an effective way of raising funds. So try this way, try this method, and then we'll also call you and guide you on the things you need to do. So when, when your, your mentor calls you now, he'll be walking you through the series of steps or the things you need to do. But after sending this letter, when you get this money, there's a warning I want to give to those of you. The first one is, use the money strictly for what you ask it for. Why I'm saying this, there's a law called Pascal's law, which you need to be aware of. Once you've read this money, beware of Pascal's law. And what does Pascal's law say? Pascal's law says that as your income increases, your expenses will automatically increase to match the revenue. Meaning that, let's say, when you were earning 100000 Walking to, to your office might not be a big problem. Now, let's say somebody now invests about $5 million in your business. Because of Pascal's law, he says that you now start to see finding it difficult to work. Rather, you prefer to take a taxi to work. And what happened? That revenue that was supposed to have gone to your business, your expenses will now rise by the what you are now paying for taxi to your office to wipe out the extra income. That way, you wake up one day and find out that you've not used the money for what you're supposed to use it for. That is where financial discipline is very, very important. If you lack financial discipline, I strongly advise you, don't go into raising money via proposal. Because you break a lot of relationship and a lot of people will feel disappointed in you, in what you are saying, you say you, you are going to do, and you, and you don't do it. But most importantly is that you find that a paying back becomes a huge challenge and you find, yourself, you find that you've placed yourself on, under a lot of emotional stress that you don't know how to handle. 
So it's important you are, you are aware of Pascal's law and you don't allow it to affect you. And the best way of preventing Pascal's law from affecting you is for you to deploy the finances once they come into the areas that you said you are going to deploy them according to the plan that you've given to the investor. The next one is pay back when you promise to pay back. See, once you have generated that money, don't feel that, okay, this guy should understand. Let me just use it to get more, get more money before I pay back. Once you have raised that money, go and, if it's with a check, say, sir, the money is ready. This is what I, the money invested, and this is the interest. But, sir, if you don't need this money now, please, can I use it again for another period of so, so, so? Let it be with the authority, authorization of the investor that you are using the money again. Don't just on your own reinvest the money, hoping that the investor will understand. Anything can come up in the second period. And most times it's in the second period that unexpected things that happen. And then you find yourself in some serious challenge. Make sure that when you have generated that money, you pay back your investor. I hope you have learned a lot. And you have learned certain things. Your, 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 your mentor and your coach will be calling you to discuss this video with you. And tell you areas that you need to improve on. And also work with you in giving you the assignment and your goal for the week. Thank you for listening to us. And we hope to see you next week in the next video which is about how you can raise money via partnership. Now, the next, sorry, no, the next video is, we will be, the lecture of the next video will be delivered by the MD of Jeremy Leatherworks, so that he will share with us how he was able to raise 2.5 million from Apostle Alele William, who has been the chairman of a lot of quoted companies in the Nigeria Stock Exchange, who share with us what he did to raise the money so that we can also learn from his practical experience. Then we'll now move to the next um, course on how to raise money via partnership. Thank you once again for listening to us. I hope to see you in the next video.